Okay, I'm going to talk today about two patent cases that the court is hearing this week. Um, one is the Nautilus versus Biosig case, and the other is the Akamai versus Limelight case. These are two cases that the court has heard out of six patent cases that it's heard this term. First, I'm going to talk about the Nautilus case, which is the one that has broader implications. That case was heard on April 28, 2014, and it involved the issue of indefiniteness, or more particularly, what the standard is for holding a patent claim to be invalid as indefinite. The invention related to a heart rate monitor, and it's something that I think a lot of people have probably seen. It's on, for example, treadmills, um, there's a cylindrical bar, and then there's a pair of electrodes. And so the patent claim used the term, said that the pair, each pair of electrodes was in spaced relationship to each other. And so there was litigation between the two, BioSig um, sued Nautilus, and uh, Nautilus said that a person of skill in the art would not understand what in spaced relationship to each other meant, that it wouldn't know how far apart the electrodes had to be. The district court agreed with that and said that the claim was indefinite and therefore invalid, and the federal circuit reversed. And it said that in order for a patent claim to be indefinite, it needed to be insolubly ambiguous. And that's the language that the federal circuit has used for many years, unless there's no possible construction um, that a person of skill would understand, then the claim is not indefinite. That's the issue that the Supreme Court is deciding. One uh, thing that's difficult about this issue is it's very hard to precisely define how definite a claim has to be in order to pass uh, muster. What's clear is that the Federal Circuit's current case, this insolubly ambiguous, does not result in a lot of patent claims being held invalid. And it appears that the Supreme Court is going to reject the Federal Circuit's case, but it's unclear what the Supreme Court is going to put in its place. So that's the first case. The second case is the Limelight versus Akamai case. That case is being argued on April 30th, 2014. And that case involves the doctrine of uh, inducing infringement, and more particularly, whether somebody can induce infringement when there is no underlying direct infringement. Uh, the Federal Circuit has been struggling with that issue for a few years. The invention in that case related to um, a method of delivering images from a website to a user. Um, and it used a network of distributed servers. Limelight was sued for infringement. And Limelight said that actually the users perform some of the steps. Limelight performed some of the steps. The users performed some of the steps. And therefore, there wasn't one party that performed all of the steps. And the district court said, in that case, there could be no infringement and no inducing infringement. The Federal Circuit eventually heard the case in Bank, the whole court, and issued a very splintered opinion that reversed the district court and found that in certain circumstances, um, even if there was no direct infringer, there could be liability for a party like Limelight for inducing infringement. And it found that if a company like Limelight advised, encouraged, or otherwise um, induces others to complete all the steps of a method, there could be infringement. This case has special importance for the business method and software communities where there's more claims that are written in this sort of format. 